folks, here's the deal. Here's what we got going on. It's a GD GMRN. And uh, for everybody that knows about people and places and things and proper nouns, you know that that means it's damn grown man record night. And we're doing psychedelic video effects tonight. We're doing all kinds of crazy business. We got a special episode. Uh, we apologize last week uh, here in the Southeast, there was a major ice storm. So what happened was we were without power. It was a state of emergency in North Carolina. I posted a little video. I, know I appreciate a lot of you checking us out and seeing and checking up on us. Some of you were concerned, man, saying we stay safe and all that jazz. Hey, man, we appreciate you. Uh, we, we, we appreciate you thinking about us. So, so what we did was um, the power was out. Bad ice storm was crazy. So um, we just uh, managed to get by. We didn't have any power, but we did. We were able to secure a heating source. We were able to secure a, a power source for, uh, we had a shortwave radio. So we did the same stuff we did. We drank some beers. Uh, cameraman put some uh, chicken wings on the grill out, out front here. They were terrific, some barbecue wings. And uh, so we were drinking beers and eating wings and listening to tunes on the shortwave radio. We found some cool That's shit. Hey man, back porch music, radio show. Don't don't forget your good uh, your good radio programs out there. There's some good ones still to this day. Uh, trust us. So uh, when you're on the road or something, uh, you know, be sure to check out some of those uh, really good radio programs. Look a little bit outside of the box, and you'll find some cool shit. Shortwave, man. We just bumped around, we found a little jazz station. We found a little bluegrass station, and I'm like, I'm kind of feeling like a little. GMRN, I'm feeling like a little uh, classic rock. So then we hit up some classic rock. So we were doing the same shit we were doing as that we normally do on Friday nights, uh, just doing it over there. But I will tell you what saved us for the most part, because it was pretty damn cold, is uh, we actually went up to Cameraman's storage unit and, uh, and, and, and we picked up a kerosene heater. Now the problem was the, the uh, storage unit was um, uh, one of the keypad things. Well, that's a le that's powered in. So cameraman had to jump the fence, go over, get the kerosene heater, had water in his unit. That's a separate issue. Bring the shit back up. We hoisted it over the fam, uh, fence, brought it back, but it kept us warm while we were dogging our wings and really wanted to take this time to, uh, to appreciate uh, the, the guy that really pulled us through this situation. And that's our good friend, the Kerosene Heater. Um, never been on the program before, but we welcome Mr. Kerosene Heater to the program this evening. And I tell you what, man, um, you really helped us out in a pinch because uh, it was so damn cold uh, in, in here. Um, and uh, I'm a tough guy. You know what I mean? I'm a tough guy, but... Um, but you know, it started to get a little rough. And so we reached for the kerosene heater. And um, I mean, hey man, what was it like sitting in here chilling with us on a Friday night? Well, I'll tell you, uh, Mikey Benez, it's, it's been five years. Yeah. And I, 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 it's never felt so good to get out. I'll tell you. Uh, you've, you've been cooped up in there a little bit. Well, uh, your cameraman don't get me out too often. Yeah. So uh i i don't know i i need i need some fuel in my life sure who everybody does and so you came <laughs> over and you i mean you warmed us on up now uh it was cool i mean i'm i know it's not the normal environment that you're probably used to uh but you came over and we were jamming some tunes and eating some wings and i, I hope you didn't mind because eating some wings eating some wings yeah we were eating some wings now we're listening to wings we were listening to them uh, Paul I'm McCartney. a fan. I'm a fan. You like wings? Absolutely. Paul McCartney. Do you prefer Paul McCartney or the wing stuff at post Beatles? Uh, I'm a Beatles guy myself, you know. Well, well sure, but once the Beatles I, stopped. I, I was made in the Beatles era. You know? Absolutely. Sure you were. You got a little. Okay. I don't want to. Okay. Uh, Be careful. Be careful. Okay. All right. Uh, but, but anyhow, uh, I hope you didn't mind. We took a little uh, queso dip. Absolutely. We set it on the, the top of you over there. Absolutely. And kept that, yeah, we kept that warm. We had some uh, Tostito scoops. Well, that, that, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, you know? the Frito scoops and brought them in and, uh, and scooped it up. But, man, it was cool chilling with you. Uh, it was kind of like seeing a girl. Hey, chilling. Oh, okay, well, maybe not chilling. 
Oh. No, it was a reward. Yeah, everybody's a damn it was comedian. Awesome. It was a great Friday night. Yeah, the damn uh, the, the, the heater's a damn comedian. Isn't that awesome? So, uh, but it was cool though. Uh, I know you. It's not your normal scene, but we appreciate you coming in and chilling absolutely, with us. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, keeping us warm and uh, keeping the the fellowship flowing. So, I wanted to remind everybody that all these. Uh, if you've not checked us out, heater. If you've not checked us out, we got us a damn YouTube channel on the GD internet. And uh, no, I'm not talking about the inside of swimming trunks when I talk internet. I'm talking about the World Wide Web. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for keeping us warm. And it's uh, and it, it, it's just fantastic for keeping us warm, uh, Mr. Ka Kerosene Heater. But we'll tell you about our YouTube channel. Let's go back to that YouTube graphic. So I'll tell you. Um, what we do is we take these talk show segments that we do on the uh, Ustream. We appreciate you dropping by. Watch your step there, boss. Watch your damn step. I mean, act like you got some damn sense for once. Freaking heaters, man. I'll tell you what. There was a reason people went to gas. Jesus Christ. I mean, we appreciate him. We appreciate him, but Jesus Christ. Um, so we, we take these talk show segments... We take these talk show segments and we put them up on our YouTube channel. Um, it's youtube.com slash Machete Miller. And we've got some new subscribers checking us out. Um, we, we really appreciate that. We're getting close to 200. We're going to do a damn contest. I promise. I promise we're going to do a contest. And it's coming real soon. But I, I wanted to revamp my question. Somebody else kind of did my question. and it's Who did your question? Ah, I don't think it was on purpose. You to call them out? No. It wasn't on purpose, but I, I feel like uh, I feel like I need to rethink what I'm going to do, and I wanted to rethink my prizes as well. Did you, could you mention the question? I mentioned it. It's all right though. It's all right. I think it's I think uh. it was a little too common. So we're gonna for grown men record night. So we're gonna do something weird. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Oh, you got a three shot. We got a three hey, shot, uh, baby. Master, uh, uh, control room, take the three shot. Yeah, oh, we're taking did. the three shot. You got it. Hey, folks, we wanted to welcome a special guest in the studio, Mikey Bananas, of course, Steve Fever, uh, co-host as always, and we wanted to welcome our good friend Jay. Jay is the drummer in, uh, in the Pork Chop, my very first band. Pork Chop. That's yeah. Pork I've chop. heard of y'all. That's off the Pork Chop. Yeah. I heard you on the radio. I heard someone talk about you on the radio not too long That's ago. That's right. So uh, we're talking back from high school. So uh, Jay stopped by for the like first time. Jay. Hadn't seen Jay in a long time, so this is really cool. Jay actually bought. Uh, he, Jay collects the record record albums. Oh, he does. And, That's right. uh, he collects record albums. Okay. So what? What he, uh, we brought over a little stack of stuff, and that was uh, oh, you played that the, Cure you played earlier. The cult. The cult. The, cult. the Cure. It's a big difference. Uh, there, Mr. People, Bananas. people do that though. Yeah, yeah I know. That's people one of those do I do that. What else you uh, play? Well, it's we a new uh, cult, new LP. It's about two years old. Uh, it's a, it's a good mix of hard and. Uh, kind of melodic rock. And very, soft mostly, rock. The, mostly the same lineup. Mostly the same lineup. It's uh, Ian Asbury and Billy Duffy are the two main guys. Yeah. Okay. And we got a John Tapesta on drums and Chris Wise on bass. That was a cool record. Man. I used to love very, to watch very, him very, very sing. Good. He's mm -hmm. such a good presence very, very on good. stage. He's just got that stage presence with the mic stand. Oh yeah. A feather on his mic Still stand. Still rocking. If you, if you get the crowd going, you can screw up and it doesn't even matter. Doesn't as long matter. as you know how to get the crowd going. Absolutely. You've done that time or two. Uh, hey. 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 Um, hey, you know, guys know, uh, for our local cats, if you're checking us out live, uh, tomorrow night, we got the ACC tournament in town here in Greensboro. They're playing basketball. Basketball. Doom, doom, doom. Tomorrow night, we got a free Eddie Money show. Eddie Money? Eddie Money. Eddie Money. Freaking money, money is playing live at a restaurant in a restaurant's parking lot in Greensboro, in a North parking Carolina. Parking lot. Yeah. Down by the river. He needs money. Yeah. He he must. It, it must be Eddie needs money. He's playing live. Hey, I appreciate Eddie money for coming out and doing that. Sure. He's got some. I tunes. will say. I will say. His mouth always bugged me. I'm sorry. His mouth. Like <laughs> on Beavis and Butthead when they talk about. Him. That's uh, uh, shaking, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, but so Eddie Money's playing a free show. So the local cats, man, go check that out. Why the hell wouldn't you? Absolutely. 
We don't want to talk about reasons you wouldn't. We'll talk well, about reasons yeah, you would. There's a reason you shouldn't go. Yeah, but we, we we'll can't <laughs> talk about that. Hey -oh. You could wear a disguise though. Hey -oh. I saw you wear the, the 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 glasses and the nose with the mustache I've been disguise. Wear, I've been on the I think wear you disguise. should wear that and go see Eddie Money. That's cool. They won't they won't arrest you. Um, speaking of basketball, you got any cool <laughs> basketball records? Basketball records? You know, I, 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 I've got. Well, I should have brought it. I've got. We played it last time. Uh -huh. though. It's the the uh, Jim Carroll. Oh, that's right from the basketball. The diaries. basketball diaries. But I got the Jim Carroll album. And you know, there was one uh, basketball. And take your damn hat, Doctor What. No, th I think the the heater left this here. Heater left that behind. Throw it down in ang in, in anger. He didn't sound angst. as angry as I thought he would be. I like, <laughs> I like the word angst now. Teenage angst has paid off well. Okay. Damn right. Uh, let's let's talk oh, a little. It just seems like so long. I was so excited that I thought maybe we'd do a show last Saturday, but. Yeah, I really wish we could have. Yeah. I really wish we could have. Um, but like I said, but we it got... gives us a chance to re-energize re our, our fuel cells. Absolutely, I got stuff. Now I'm just like, oh, let's do the show. We gotta do the show. Let's do it on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of a little basketball, ACC tournaments in town right up the road from us. NC State won tonight. They're NC headed, State they're headed to the semifinals, I guess. Well, one, two, three. Three of us have been to NC State. And my wife Steve's graduated wife. from NC State. She actually graduated from NC State. Yeah, we didn't graduate. Anybody graduate just, from uh, NC State? We're just, part of, <laughs> we're just professional partners. We nice. went there. Places, though. Uh, yeah, we went there and did some stuff. Uh, there was some stuff and some things involved. We won't get into a whole lot of that this mm -hmm. evening. But uh, David Lee Roth, eat him and smile. What's it got to do with it? With tobacco Road. Oh, basketball. Oh, I get it. I get it. Because around, yeah, around there's here, there's a lot of great tobacco versions road. of Tobacco Road. Around here, we call it Tobacco Road. We're talking about like, uh, you know, when they talk Tobacco Road rivalry, we're talking ACC, Duke, Carolina, it's NC Chapel State, Hill, to Durham, to yeah. Raleigh, to yeah. up to even yeah. up to Winston Salem. Yeah, that's. Uh, I always think it's I-40 from about Winston all the way to yeah. Raleigh. I mean, you can I, throw I Wake Forest in there. What is Tobacco Road? By it's definition. North Carolina. Well, the ACC schools North Carolina. Okay. But, um, you know, think about that. There are better versions of this. There's an Eric Burden and the Animals. It's the Eric Burden Declares yes. War. Eric Burden Declares War. Eric Burden Declares War. There's animals. Tobacco Roads on and, there. Uh, can't find it. There's two records. You I have it. I have that record. I also have... But I like this version. Steve Vai on guitar. Yeah, this is a really good version. Can't this find my harmonics? Eric, I can't find my Motels does that, record either. Does that have uh, Billy Sheehan on bass? Does that have Billy Sheehan on bass? I can't remember that. You're asking me questions, Jay. Let's see, uh, uh, you look at for, it. For this sake, for, it does. for people sorry. who are interested, there's probably a lot of tickets available for the ACC tournament. Now that Carolina lost, Carolina's, Carolina's out. It's a great idea. I tell you, what, speaking of Carolina, hey cameraman. Uh, Billy Sheehan on bass. Yeah. No yes. Carolina cans. Let's talk about that a second before we get to go further. Wow. Be real easy. That's a that's a super group lineup right there. Yeah, Billy Sheen. Take pick, pick your microphone up now. Sorry about that. Yeah, you okay, gotta talk Jay. to that Good mic. Lineup. Hey, look right there, folks. We got the uh, 1982 North Carolina championship cans. I've heard this is grape soda. It's got old Mike Jordan Let's on the back. Let's try there. it. Pop one open. One of them's been drained. It had a hole in it, but the rest of them are intact still. Nice. So we could them. Just, just, target can you infuse right? them with some fresh carbonation it's in some way? It's funny because it says uh, on the back where it lists, you know, it's got Sam Perkins and the names are all yeah. players. And it says Mike Jordan. Mike. Mike Jordan. Jordan. Let's, sit that, let's sit that over there somewhere. There I'll mess go. it up. Where do you want that? Uh, Here you go. Easy, easy, easy. Can't just grab like a normal six pack. I got you. Buddy. Everything's, everything's messed I up. I got you. Steve messed it up. I never had like Carolina. Yeah. So. I was an okay. Indiana fan. Okay. Well, hey, folks, we wanted to mention something this evening. Uh, something we've neglected one of our main sponsors of the program uh, here in the last few weeks. And we wanted to revisit this because uh, some things have come up. Speaking of basketball, uh, basketball's a tough sport. You get down there in the trenches, you're doing a lot of sweating, a lot of dribbling. You got to dribble. And uh, sometimes you get some of the guys wear the uh, tank tops, some of them wear the t shirts. And, uh, so, so, sometimes that means you get sweaty underarms. Uh, the, now, I think they call that perspiration. Perspiration. Now, let me tell you, there's only really one way I know to get rid of perspiration, and not just because they sponsor the program. Preparation. Because I, uh, I really, I, I believe in this message, folks. I mean, it's believing and achieving. And what we're here trying to do at Grown Man Record Night is we're trying to switch them to Mitchum. And uh, Mitchum is just a just a goddamn fine product. I'll be honest with you. 
Uh, Man. You need to really get rid of... Um, I, I've... I've fallen under Switchem to Mitchum. I'm, I now use Mitchum every day. Hey, man, let me tell you I use what. the gel. I use the gel. No matter whether you're battling down on the paint or on the court, uh, down in the hitting hoops and yeah. buckets. Yeah. Blocking shots. Blocking shots. You got, when you're blocking a shot, your arm you is shoot. exposed right into the face of your of the guy shooting. You nothing, know. Nothing. Nothing. So, I. You can, you know, diss them all you want with this, but you got to respect him with that. Nothing has been grosser in the history of sports than in the 1980s Kevin McHale's oh. underarm hair. It's oh. the grossest shit that's ever lived <laughs> in the entire world. I'll put it on my tombstone. I don't, hey, hey, Jay, I don't care, Jay. I don't care. Put it on my tombstone. <laughs> Kevin McHale's underarm hair is, is nasty. I thought Parrish's was worse. It was, but he was, a, he was a colored man, so you couldn't see <laughs> African American. I'm sorry. But you couldn't see his uh, business as much as Kevin. So it, bl- it blends well. It blended. Our well. sticks out it like, was a spriggy, fire. like a fire. I bet. I bet if Bill Walton's that like, red, he kind of had a red bush under his arm. Okay. Bill Walton's probably was pretty bad. This show has gotten entirely perfect. <laughs> but whether or not you're down there in the paint, or whether you're at church, because you're wearing a nice suit coat at church. Switch him. Switch him to Mitchum. Switch him to Mitchum. So let's do us a little Jello shot in honor of Mitchum. Folks, you, oh, I'm on fill up my hand. <laughs> I'm a premature uh, right. al- alculator. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Keeping it moving. I'm going to get all the record sticky. Said the old woman to the sailor. <laughs> joke time. Write it down. Pull out a notebook, everybody. It's joke time, and we're writing them all down tonight. It'll be a quiz at the end of the show. <laughs> you get it wrong, you're kicked off the program. You'll never be allowed back to view the program. So take some uh, GD them, notes. you got to get them all right. Get them all right. Chapter review coming up before. Okay, let's get into a little bit of what we played this evening. Um, hey, t- turn that down a little bit um, on, in the headphone. Played some played some cool stuff. Uh, nice eclectic mix of stuff. How about a little uh, Bill Doggett, Honky Tonk Organ? Cool record. Um, got a couple of Bill Doggett records. Really cool stuff. We're not going to walk these up. No, no, that's all right. You guys right. are farther away than ever before with a three shot. We're doing a three shot for probably the first time. Because Jay's chilling with us. Pork chop drummer. How about a little Wild Cherry? Hey, got a little handy. play that funky music on there. There's three records up in the front. Of the um, stuff we Just play. had to jam that side at least. That's a really good copy. I think Cameraman bow, gave me, cameraman bow, gave me bow, that bow, one. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, Is that on here? I believe Miracles is a sexy thing. No. Okay. Good record. I'm thinking of another play, one. Hey, played a little. That's cool. Got, that's cool. That's heavy. it. That's we it. We got heavy Not, up your yep. ass real nope. quick. Nope. Uh, between <laughs> the Buried in Me, the Parallax, uh, two future sequence. Y'all played that? We did. We played a little heavy I was stuff. on the road. Man. Good I don't man. play a lot of super heavy, like, new uh, metal anymore. This is one of the exceptions. These cats Good are stuff. actually from around this area. Very technical. Very proficient. Incredible musicianship. Incredible drummer. Yeah, the, everything is, and it's on this really cool. We'll pull this out and show it. We'll probably What's the drummer's before. name? Do you remember? Can't remember. But check out this vibe. Oh, it's like baby blue. Carolina, Carolina blue. blue. Carolina blue with a little. I call it sky blue. I hate to say the word Carolina. I guess blue. it's got a little splatter or a little marble in in there as well. Super cool record, especially if you like the uh, for you guys out there that really like Dillinger Escape Plan and stuff along that vein. Yeah. Check out between the buried and me. Uh, become a tradition. Girlfriend gets me. You will the not be man. disappointed. I date a I date a metalhead girl, and she likes metal. metal. She likes metal. She likes like metal. Ozzy Osbourne. And ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's like the movie trailer guy. Uh, let's uh, follow the. I haven't played Dave this in a long LaFontaine. time. Oh, okay. Steely Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy, seventy three on ABC. Nice picture on the back. Fantastic. Look at that picture. Hate, well, they can't see that. You can't see that. <laughs> Look it up. They're hanging out in the studio. It looks like they just burned one. They're just hanging out in the studio. There's a cat with some overalls. I was rocking some overalls when the when the power was out. You were rocking some overalls. I love some overalls. Cameraman rocks them quite a bit. A uh, little cigarette put out in the front there. I hope it's a different pair of it's overalls. A, yeah, it's a... Uh, oh, we share overalls. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, if anybody wants to reach us here in the studio while we're live, uh, feel free to call our studio line. It's... it's uh, Call the country code. It's 011, and then you're going to want to dial 888-417-598-449. Pause. 749-888-5559.
Hit us up in the studio. We'll answer all your questions live on the air. Well, Eddie Lockjaw Davis, uh, sweet and lovely. Give us a call today. Fantastic record, man. Uh, we listened to side one of this. Dude even uh, labeled this for us. Recorded in Nice, July 26, 1975. Classic jazz. He says. Somebody, like wrote, said, somebody wrote that on there with his pen. It's CJ level, the classic jazz CJ. Level. Very artistic. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, it's... Uh, if you have a cool nickname in jazz like Lockjaw, I'm gonna buy your record. Just like if you're, if there's a black and white picture, Jay, mm -hmm. on a jazz record, mm -hmm. two African American dudes smoking cigarettes, buy it. That I'm, makes it cool. I'm buying your record. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take a chance on it. Maybe, maybe I'll get fooled. Absolutely. I bet you I won't though. I bet you I won't. Oh. So uh, great record, Eddie Lockjaw Davis. Don't sleep on it. I've uh, been in a little mood for war because I've been thinking a little Eric Burden this week. And uh, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later, but I wanted to play some he's, war. He's not on this album. He's not on this album, but I wanted to play this war. It's the uh, Youngblood soundtrack. One of my favorite soundtracks, and it is funky from the word go. That album really surprised me how good oh, it was. It the did. The way through this album is straight fuck yeah. up your baloney shoot. <laughs> You got a baloney shoot, Steve? Uh, if I do, it's it's being shot up there. Let's start this whole show over. Three, two, <laughs> one. Welcome to Grown Man Record Night. We mentioned baloney shoot earlier, so we're starting the whole show over. Follow that up with a little poison. Talk dirty to me. 45 in a picture sleeve. It's got a Walmart sticker on it. I don't know where this is from. Actually, we, I, don't, I don't think you followed it up with that, but that was the last we one that you played. We didn't get Walmart around here for a long it doesn't time. Get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. Just like Milwaukee... Uh, it's best. Old Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah. I, I played a few records while I sh when I showed up. Yeah, what'd you play, and, Steve? Uh, because it's uh, Pi Day, Happy Pi Day. Sure. It's Einstein's birthday. It is. And wh what can you tell me about Pi? 3.1415956, That's as far as I got. That's pretty good. That's pretty uh, good. I can't do any of that. I but know, one five nine. I, I thought I was going to go for the world record, and I looked it up, and some Asian dude had a two hundred forty digit uh, record. Wow! I'm giving up. Right so we top. hope you've enjoyed a pie of some nature, a meat pie even. Even a meat pie. A quiche would work. A lot of our friends over the. Uh, over you don't want to do dessert pie. Over the pond, like to do pies that uh, ain't got no fruit in it. Shepherd's pie is awesome. <laughs> Shepherd's pie. Everybody knows about that it's one. It's good. It's good for uh, St. Patrick's Day coming up. They do a bunch of weirdo shit other than that. Anyway, Key Lime Pie. This yeah. is uh, Camper Van Beethoven, 1989. Great record. Uh, really good record. I, I got, burned I this got off two, of you. I've got two Camper vinyls, uh -huh. more additional. But, um, yeah, this is a great record. It's got uh, pictures of Matt, St Matt Stickman, a cover. Uh -huh. And I, I'm going to kill myself for not remembering who the original artist was. But it's a really great song. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, are loved they, it. Are they loved a good live band? They are a good live. I saw them in Atlanta at the Roxy. Uh, That's the dude from Cracker, right? David Lowry and the guitarist. I apologize for not remembering his name, but it's a great, great David show. <laughs> Nameless <laughs> guitarist, and it's a great, it's a great live show. They, they they play their show, and at the end, they kind of put down all their instruments, come back for an encore, and they they pick up uh, European folk instruments, and they're march, marching around with big balalakas and you know just whatever they have. Name I did. Okay. It's a great, great. Anyway, um, yeah. we also played another in honor of Pi. Yeah. I've got, I do have um, on vinyl yeah. um, American Pie oh, by yeah. uh, Don um, McLean. I was going to say Don Henley. <laughs> Don yeah. McLean's American Pie. I've got the one with the thumb. It's a really cool it album. Was a <laughs> Vincent, <laughs> Vincent's my favorite Don, Don McLean song. But this is the 45. The funny thing about it is, Side one is American Pie Part One. Yeah. Side two is American Pie Part Two because it's a, you know it's a long wow. song. You're not going to get it on no matter what you do. So side one ends like a like a single would, you know, like a single on the radio. I, so we played side two. I just wanted to find out where it came in. Let's kind of play that for a second though. You're jamming a song. It's your favorite song, and it ends. Well, stop. Flip it over. Put it on the other this, side. But this. Now the song continues. Okay, well, not, not many of you have heard 8-tracks, but if you listen to 8-tracks, that's how they work. Uh -huh. You're in the middle of a song, you know. Go get yourself some cheap sunglasses. 
and then in the next track kicks in is yeah you know it, that's how eight tracks work so it's kind of like like an eight track in that weird way Can somebody explain to me what an eight track actually is it is a well, it's a larger cassette that when uh the greek gods had periods what ended up happening was that's a story for another show My father had one of 68 torino lastly yeah. Because of Pi. Oh, yeah. Mr. Theme Time Radio Hour here. Do it, Steve. Um, Get we, busy on it, Steve. I had, to, I had to play Honey Pie. Impress me, Steve. Actually, not Honey Pie. This is Wild Honey Pie, which uh -huh. is the... Like, yeah. Honey Pie! Off the Beatles' White Album. This is... Um, I believe this is a 1986 pressing. Uh-huh. Um, now, some people have said some of the best pressings were in, 80, in the 80s. 80s I don't think Wally I have T. Wally T. But uh, That's what Wes uh, It is a capital. Hey, happy birthday to Wes. Tomorrow, if you're watching this live, and everybody that watches the YouTube stuff well, knows Super Wes. Well, shit, I should have played, played your birthday. Tomorrow, uh, that's right. Tomorrow's his birthday. Wow, 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 wow. So happy birthday to Wes. He's a good friend of the program. Happy birthday to you. Gentlemen. He's a, he's a cool gentleman. He likes the record album. He likes the good beers. We all like it. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we played. Beers? Uh, wah, 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 wah. I wanted to mention one cool thing. This is a bearded place. This is a bearded place. A lot of beers around Your beard. Here. Well, I won't talk. Let's check it out. <laughs> and uh, this is something that really made me feel old I read today, which would have been more appropriate last week, which would have technically been the anniversary. Of March what? March 7th. Of what? The 20th anniversary 20th of anniversary. Apex Twins Selected Ambient Works Volume 2. And you happen to have and, that here. Uh, the girlfriend got wow. me this for Christmas a couple of years ago. I would get up if it wasn't a problem. Though. I will put this out there in my mind in my experience knowing what I know as a man this is the best ambient man. album that has ever been released I'll say that okay lots of people now could, there's there's that's up for argument of, I'm co of course Eno, I'm a Brian Eno fan I'm a Tangerine Dream fan I love all that shit I will say Selected Ambient Works Volume 2 is the best ambient album ever. I'm going to I'm gonna argue that Music for Airports by Brian Eno is the best. But I do not have it. Yeah. So I can't put it out in front of you, but I, you know, I've got it on CD. But. Let me give, I tell you what, let's hold this cover up if we could, please. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you the skip of a little bit of background. If you're not familiar with this record, and that's a repress, which I'm very proud to have. It's the first full-length release by Richard D. James for Warp uh, 20 years ago, March 7th, 1994. Uh, there was originally like a uh, uh, Selected Amy Works 85 through 92 that he did, but this one, um, that consisted of a lengthy textured ambient compositions in the vein similar to Brian Eno. This album, uh, Richard D. James oh, of Apex Twin really describes sick. it as like standing in a power station on acid. Let's all take that in for just a second. And I think that's one of the best descriptions. I've never read that before. That's the best damn How many description is it? Three, of this three records. Yeah, of this album ever. Is it the one with the numbers and the le or the yeah. letters? Standing on a power station. No, nope, it's not that. Like and acid. Into there. Yeah. Um, he said, um, and went on to note that the sounds were, uh, on record were inspired by lucid dreams, and that upon awakening, he would attempt to recreate the sounds and record them. Now, this is very interesting because I've actually uh, in, uh, researched this particular phenomena independently from this, and I'm a huge Apex Twin fan. Huge. Um, he claimed to have natural synesthesia. What's synesthesia? Which contributed to this album, which I have been so interested in. You create shapes with sounds yeah. or something like that. When your you mind? Hear, when you hear certain sounds in your mind. See colors. You see colors. Oh. Or if you hear numbers, see if I colors. say like five, you're five like, oh blue, yeah, five. Five's, five's red. No, five's blue. Five's blue. Or you automatically know. No way, nine's yellow. What are you talking about? There's no discussion. It's like saying grass is green, the sky is blue, three is green. Okay. Oh, five is green. Five is green, eight is yellow. Three is yellow. Three, cool. Yeah. First it's, base. It's, uh, but it's a very cool phenomenon, and I did had. This album has always made a significant uh, connection with me, and uh, it's funny because I'm, I have a real strong connection to that phenomenon. I've researched it pretty right. heavily because I think that's so weird and cool. I think I may have a slight touch of that. 
enough to where when I read the thing what it was that I started giggling so that I knew that it, there was something something was much going like on. when you see a horse. Yeah, much like when I see a horse, there was something going on there. <laughs> um, no, you you turned me on to Apex Twin big yeah. time, big oh, time. Man, I meant to grab. Hey, Ron, can you, uh, cameraman. <laughs> Look at the white albums, the plain white in my electronica section. Selected Ambient Works, Volume 3. Volume 3? Yeah. Do you have Volume 1? I don't. I've got Volume 3. Which, Is there a Volume 1? This original album had a bunch of tracks on it, and they couldn't fit it on the CD. So uh, it turned out on Selected Ambient Works, which is an Astral Works compilation, which I bought from a cat off of eBay, it has the track they took off of there called Number 19 because they didn't really give these tracks names. Mm. Uh, listeners ended up giving them names. Yeah. Like untitled track, but each, uh, bit, but fans have given each track a descriptive name based on the image representing it. So, so like because, Thaw and all that's not the original name? Because yeah, when the, when the, I don't want to pull this out. Yeah. But on the, on, there's like little etchings for the name. Okay. There's little like hieroglyphic yeah, looking yeah, jobs. Yeah. And the fans have kind of said, well, that means rhubarb. And so that, which is one of the names. Crazy. I don't want to spend too much time on okay. it. I can talk about Apex I think women. you have already. Rhubarb, right. really? Yes. Oh. Rhubarb is one of the I love rhubarb. So as it gets a little later tonight to honor rhubarb the uh, 20th pie. anniversary. Rhubarb pie. Like? We should play That's rhubarb. It's a pie song. There we go. My, my grandmother made great rhubarb So hey, pie. check it out. <laughs> to honor the 20th anniversary, we'll be playing It's like some celery. Of this it's in the celery later. family. So stay tuned for that. It's stocky. Okay. All right. I tell you what. Sour celery. Sour. Howard or Howard? Howard. Howard. I tell you what, Howard. folks. Uh, we've been waiting for it for a couple of weeks now. Wow. But I think it's time. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What about uh, video? Are we going to do a video? Let's show a video. Let's do a video. I tell you what. We did a video. We, we talked about uh, Chris hooked us up. Yeah. Our buddy Farns Chris Brzezinski. Hooked us up with this little thing, label protector that keeps you from um, getting your labels wet. While you're um, cleaning. cleaning your records. Your vinyl records. We tried that one week right after we went And bowling. I'm sure, let me say, first of all, with a few practice and not just with the camera in your face, you're going to do a better job with this. You're going to do yeah. it and give it justice. This was really our first time trying. So this is our right out of the box. And it was also right after we came, back from, off. We came back from bowling. And we'd been drinking. We had been drinking. Steve had a uh, stain. Oh, this was, uh, this was actually Oscar night. Yeah, what? Steve had a stain on his shirt. It was a dip. If you can uh, a name. A cheese dip. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I'm screwing this up. You're a bit. Reg Reginald Ruiner. <laughs> uh, if you can guess what the stain is on Steve's shirt, you win. Uh, you win the world. You win, a middle, you you win, win the world. You win a middle finger. Yeah. So, okay, let's check this out, and we'll see if this meets up to uh, Chris Brzezinski. So, yeah, I brought, a, I brought a clip, you know. And we'll be right back. I just got Sharpie on my hands. We'll be right back. I brought a clip. Chris Roll. All right, so here we are. We decided uh, our first test is going to be on uh, Jefferson Starship, Red Octopus. It's a great album, Grunt Records. Uh, this one's actually really dirty, though. We're going we're gonna, to first, we're going to listen to it. And then we're going to clean it, and then we're going to listen to it again and see so what it sounds tracks. like and see how it looks. So here we go. I'm spinning the record and take it now. Let's see what we got. Ooh, rough, rough. Not too bad. That uh, gives us an idea. A little poppy here and there. So let's try the Brzezinski disc and see what we got, okay? Let's check it out. Hey, hey, I'm behind you. Sorry. Don't be afraid to go back and forth. No? 
closest in the same radius. In the groove? Yeah. Okay. Boy, it's getting it dry now. Use that, use that sponge you got there. Wipe it. Back and forth now. You got. Sounds pretty clean. That's pretty damn good. It made a difference. It made a difference. That's pretty damn good. It, yep. made, a, it made a big difference. Yep. I mean, yeah. there's still a little classic pop. This album's, what, 1973, it probably? Made a, not that pressing. No, no, but... It made a big difference. In a good way. A good big difference. Yeah, a good big difference. You should do that all the records. So big thanks goes hey. out to Chris Brzezinski for his great tips on... Uh, yeah, do it to all cleaning the Cleaning LPs. You know, I, of course, I'm going to... I'll do a better job myself of putting it on there tight enough to keep... Stay here for a little longer. Wet. Do all the records. All right. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Chee, 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 we're gonna put this thing to use. Very appreciative. We're telling Jay I'm gonna, about I'm gonna day. borrow that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I gotta pick one up. I'm you need to build you one, man. Yeah, a couple yeah, of outlet you, covers. If you see, watch Chris's video on YouTube, and, and it's, um, uh, I talked about it on Dixie there. Dixieland. And I, I gave the, I gave the plug on there where you yeah. could go. Um, I have too much to sip on. Okay, but yeah, it's Steve. Home Home Depot Jeez. Lowe's. These are these are outlet covers, and you just drill a hole through and get. These are the trickiest parts to get a hold of, but. That's all there is to it. And, and the cool thing about this brand that I mentioned on there as well is it comes with a built-in. Okay. It comes with a built-in gasket, so you don't uh -huh. have to. You don't have like to. Like a butthole. You don't have to <laughs> like apply, apply a gasket. Like a like a butthole or whatever you said. Yes. I don't know what the what the hell are you talking about. I don't know. All right, gasket. don't worry about that. What happened? Let's move on. Okay. Let's go on to something we call. Okay, it's the other week. Dig of the 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 week. Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, it's time for Dig of the Week. I need to pee. Everybody, I need to pee too, man. You too? Yeah, we can't. It's a lot of tea, man. Just take, no, just take a higher shot. We can't do that. We Get some two-liter bottles. Got a jug? Just a higher shot. Okay. <laughs> hey, what you got for, uh, this is from two weeks ago. Digs from two weeks ago? You brought some You brought some records. Hey, let's talk about what Jay brought. Jay brought over some cool records. We talked about that one record earlier. Uh, yeah, well, we'll come. We'll come yeah. back to his. Come back to Jay. Right. You want to talk about my records? You want to talk about your records? You do a couple. I got I'll some do big a records. Oh, do let's, let's do a couple. Back we'll and do forth. some back and forth. Back okay. and forth. Well, how about let's start a couple. Yeah. Um, this first record is a Lionel Hampton record. I just whenever I oh, can, yeah, I man. pick up Lionel Hampton. Absolutely. Why and wouldn't you? It's it's pretty beat on the the uh, the, the outside. Oh it's, yeah, I've got that. But it's pretty sweet on the inside. This is Golden Vibes yep. by Lionel Hampton. Uh, Columbia. It's a red eye label from 1959. Okay. And oh it's, wow! Uh, I didn't realize that was that early. Sweet. I've got that record. I didn't think it was that early. Yeah. That's it, cool. It, it's up there. It's up there. Um, another I picked up uh, upon that day. This was before the ice storm, by the way. Yep, that's right. Uh, Freddie Hubbard, Ride Like the Wind. Yeah. And it, Love it, the one Hubbard. reason I, I did want to pick it up, it, it's actually. Um, from WFDD, a local uh, oh, uh, station, a yeah. uh, public radio station That's here cool. in our market. And uh, the cool thing is it, it talks about these are the dates. they I guess they played certain songs and tracks. They kept track of it. Yeah. They, they just keep it on here so they know. And it kind of tells you which ones are probably their favorites because you see them more frequently. We'll start up. So a couple songs on here was, uh, they, he does a really good Birdland on uh -huh. here. Cool. And uh, also uh, a, a funny, uh, but good. Ride Like the Wind, Christopher Cross. Oh, okay. Uh, big, Cover. Big Christopher Cross. There you go. So, Talk yeah. that microphone, uh, Jay. One other record I want to mention. Just take a lap, big Quickly, Daddy. before I toss it to you. Um, go and grab a lap. I bought, we bought our house in 1998. Yeah. It's a, it's a two-story house. It's a one-story house with a, with a full basement that's, sure, that's practically done. 
there's things in that basement that I that just I never look at. Yeah. Well, the other day I finally looked on the wall and there is a 45. Huh? There's a 45 hanging on the wall on a nail, just hanging in where my tools are. Get out of town. It's been Steve. there since '98. I don't know when it got I'm there. I'm gonna need you to go and get out of town. Well, this is. Um, All right. It's called Sunny in the Sun Glows, which <laughs> later became Sunny in the Sun. Actually, on the one side it says Sunny in the Sun Glows, the other side says Sunny in the wow. Sun Liners. Wow. Same group, I believe, a Chicano band from San Antonio. Wow. And I, I lived in San Antonio back in the 70s sure. before I moved to Savannah. Tinker Air Force Base. And uh, uh, there's an Air Force Base in San Antonio. Tinker. Tinker. Yes. Okay. Yes. I lived not too far from there. Uh, but uh, talk to me, and every week, every month, every year, this is a very 50s kind of pop bubble. Uh -huh. uh, bubble gum somebody shit. discovered this band and said, hey, I want to record you guys and had them do their kind of music. Yeah. Uh, less of the Chicano flavor, but still, it's great that it was, it's, it it's actually in shape? great shape. It's is in it really? great shape. Just from sitting on the wall. Maybe we'll play that after the show. Or maybe That's during cool. the break, or if we have a, we don't, no we don't break. take no break. Take we break. push it on through. I'm gonna push it right to you. This is 2014 GMRN, Steve. Okay. We'll take breaks. I pushed it to you. Not that right. 2013 shit. Hell yeah! What you got, Jay? What'd you bring over uh, here? I, uh, I brought a few. Michael Shanker uh, of UFO fame. Yeah, man. It's a good hard rock album. Yeah. Uh, if you like guitar driven. Hard so it's rock. like a self-titled. Yes. Michael yeah. Shanker, Michael Shanker group, group. Uh, 1980 Chrysalis Records. Okay. Uh, Simon Phillips on drums, who was with, I think, ACDC at one point. Cool. The Who. Uh, I was not familiar with this record, so I'm interested to check this very out. Very good guitar rock German. Michael Schenker. Yeah. Are you familiar with this? German. He's a German he's a, his guitar. Brother, his brother Rudolph is still in the score, but they're in Scorpion. The GD guys, Germans so. got nothing to do with it. Those, those damn Germans. Yeah. I thought you said um, UFO, but I think, I think you're right. Yes. Uh, the other one... Which I think we heard earlier uh -huh. was part of the cult. Cult, which is one of I that's think, a new record, right? This is a new record, 2012, I believe. Okay, uh, that was really good. Weapon of choice, very either hard rock or melodic. It kind of alternates every song. The cool thing about this record, it came with a 45, which it was like a 45 maxi single, right? Yes. So it's a full 12 inch 45. Yeah, 12 inch, unlabeled. So you don't know huh. what you're getting, but it, it's cool. Came with the digital download as well, which, cool. which, which I like. Nice. Yeah. And these, how many 45s? Uh, 145. It's a maxi and, and sink, so it's a 12-inch 45. But it, it was the, ah. the LP and then the 45. That's okay. cool. That's kind of a double album. This is one I picked up. I didn't know much about it. The Elements. The Elements. The Elements. 1985 indie rock band out of Vancouver. Okay. Just off of a uh, indie label out of Seattle. Very good... Indie rock. What, this, what does it sound like? Kind of an Ellis Costello sounding. Maybe uh, Meat Puppets. Scream, yes. Screaming Trees. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it, it, but they, they, I looked them up. I didn't know anything about them. I emailed the guy Let's from that up. the, the head of the, up there? the head I can't of the get up there. Company. I'm not getting up. My mic will pop off. <laughs> <laughs> I emailed the record company. The guy sent me this lengthy email back to really? the history. That, yeah, it was really. You really said they like collapsed and then brought it back, right? They collapsed. They did a compilation album for the is on Green Monkey Records. But the, but the guy seemed pretty jazzed that you were like yeah. interested oh, about the label. Was the, he thought it was cool as hell. Yeah. And, and uh, it just they they have about twenty or thirty indie groups on the label. And they're they're the only rock band thing on that label. But huh? I thought Seattle, you know, eighties. I thought it sub had to be pop. Cool, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a good man. That's a good little tip, man. There's certain little. Everybody knows there's certain labels you look absolutely. for. But there's also like certain time periods and cities you look for, Absolutely. and you may strike out sometimes. But if it's like oh late '80s, early '90s, and it's Seattle, you may want to take a chance on a couple of bucks. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, That's and, not rocket science. And <laughs> the final one I got is one of my favorites. It's the first Montrose hey, album. Oh, all the grown man record night man. fans know about some GD Montrose that and how is, that was old Mikey Banana's first jamming out song. Oh, I got the fire. Got that, the fire. Yeah, that's actually not. I, no, it's not. That's the one I don't have. Not on that one actually. No, no, but no. It that is, is rock uh, candy is on this one. Yeah. That is the first, I think and, it's 1974 uh, or 5. This is the, the funny thing, i got to get up. I'm going to try to get up because, you know what? This is Son Sammy Hagar. you got to see right? this. This is Sammy Hagar. Yeah. This, this is, is one of those, Sammy watch Hagar. your feet. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of those records that, um, you know, all the guys take their shirts off on the back cover. Of course they do. Very, Why would you do that? There's Homo Sammy Trump. Hagar, I believe is this one maybe? Hip trips. On the absolutely. end there. Hips. There you go. 
Yeah. There's not a bad song. About Charlene that. wrote her name on the back Charlene of this. Charlene loves this album. Hey, those are warmer. I'd like to meet that hey. warmer. If you're Charlene and you like mantra, oh, produced, Charlene. By, produced by Ted Templeman, who of Ted. Van Halen fame. Oh, there you go. Okay. Wow, what a great, weird, what great a weird album. connection. That's a weird. Hagar came back to. Yeah. Uh, that was probably how they met up. That's I bet. probably how they. I don't know. Great yes, great album. We're speculating. Okay, I'm gonna drop a couple of albums on your ass. Drop it. Um, this is these call came from Underdog. Let's talk about a little Jeff Beck. This is my third Jeff Beck record. This is 1980 on CBS, and. Uh, there and back. I've not checked this out. It was in pretty good shape. Only a couple of, uh, excuse me, only a couple of bucks. I love the stencil font. Love the stencil. It's, it's a raised letter, right? It's a yeah, it's got a little, it's a little texture on the texture. front. Texture. Um, but I've, um, I love Jeff Beck. All the records that I've picked up. Um, I've got the the one with the orange on it. Yeah, and I've that's got good. the uh, the other one. Oh, Beckola. No. That's the orange one. I've got the orange one. Yeah. And I've got one other one. Uh, the Jeff Beck group with uh, Rod Stewart? Uh, no. Something with the. No, uh, I can't remember. What okay. It is. But um, I've loved every, every one. Blow of by them. blow. Possibly. Yeah, that's what you got. And uh, also. Which is um, very fun. Saw him in Palladia. He had that young Australian chick playing bass. Yeah. Who was a freaking beast. She was yeah. like 19. Oh, virtuoso. He's a beast, yeah. I love his use of the tremolo. Uh, very unique sound for Jeff Beck and you know you hear something you know it's damn Beck you know what I mean uh, w want to talk about a band called the Straubs the Straubs now not everybody knows about the Straubs I love the, the Straubs, Straubs are an English rock band they were formed in 64 they went from like folk to the rock yeah I was born yeah <laughs> folk uh, rock progressive type shit I've seen them for a lot of money. This one, for some reason, was a buck fifty. This is there bursting at the seams. You got a good deal then. Yeah, um, the covers have got a little. What year little is that? Spot. Straubs on. This is. Um, I've got the one that looks like a bunch of strawberries that's like, on that's it. That's like mid sixties. I mean, A&M Records. This is a little. I think it's. Um, this may be a little later than that, but not not too far. Oh, I should have asked. I can't. Seventy three. And but this actual album uh, contained the two uh, I think this one must have done the best for them. Okay. It must be the most poppy. It contains the uh, You mean poppy like this record actually has pops no, on it? No, no. Uh, it contains their two most successful singles and reached number two in the UK album chart. So it's really? a studio album. Yeah, it's yeah. studio. Down by the Lay sea. Down and Part of the Union were uh, big hits. Okay. And so uh, I described this record. It's very uh, much like Genesis. Let's listen to that later. Yeah, it's really good. And this was a dollar fifty. And I've seen like best of Straub's album, best of the Straub's. It's got the strawberries all over the front. Yeah. Ten bucks. I've got that one. I saw that at uh, yeah. Pat's for ten bucks. Um, this was a buck fifty. So I wasn't necessarily. It's a little mellow for me all the time. But for a dollar fifty, uh, get the f out of D. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I ain't leaving that shit speaking up there. Of, speaking of Genesis. Shit! Um, yeah, speaking of Genesis, love some Genesis. This is not my favorite Genesis. No. I have put this record back probably five times. Okay. Uh, this is self-titled Genesis Genesis. It's the 12th studio album. It comes from 83. The, the shapes on the front, this, these guys right here, yeah. they're Tupperware. It's called the Shapo Toy Ball. Those look like the stuff you put in the ball when you're for your kid. Yeah, the toy consists of a blue and red hollow ball with different shaped sure. holes cut into the surface. It's, a, which, it's uh, an early learning tool for infants. Absolutely. Uh, this had uh, some big hits jello on it. Jello shot mold. Uh, jello shot. Did you oh, say we jello could do, shot? Yeah, we have jello shot. We could do that. <laughs> Mama, Mama's on here. Illegal <laughs> aliens on here. Mama. I do like Mama. Yeah. Illegal Alien annoys me. I hate the video. According to the write-up, it's uh, it's like three... Has it got that song about the end of the world? Or this end of the year. It's like three prog rock no, songs. that's all's on here. That was, that was day, probably one of their last day, LPs they put out. No, this, nah. is, this is earlier. They put out way too many at the end. This is 83. <laughs> so it was before Invisible Touch. Okay. But... It was going. It was after they'd kind of like delved pre, into the pop era. And oh, they were pop by then. And that's time. that's why I've kind of shunned away from this sure. yeah. poppy yeah. Genesis. But I tell you what, I started looking at them like, yeah, this is poppy, but I kind of like their songs. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're, they're, they're good. They're yeah. good. They just gotta, you know, they got to overplay. Over play. That's what Very pop songs do. Is it, the, is it the proggy? Let me, let me no. talk about a couple now okay. real quick. Uh, that Ooh, were Steve. that were kind of level ups. If for, you don't hurry, I'm going to piss myself. Yeah, I'm, so. pi I'm about to piss myself. So keep but uh, let's talk about uh, this King Crimson album here. I picked up. Oh wow! This is called um, Lizard. It, I always get confused with the title because it really the covers nothing to do with lizards. Gotta but project, Steve. This is uh, Lizard from 1970 uh on the atlantic al uh, label yeah uh really great album uh greg lake had already left the band okay uh the singer i who's the singer on this ma 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 who is this ma, 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 ma. peter sinfield wrote all the words uh -huh. he was still with the group uh George, gordon haskell he played bass which is popular for king uh king crimson at the time the bass player was the singer for the first like four or five albums but this it's got a great cover it's an old english yeah. cover and the band members are, are interspersed in there uh, i was really happy to pick that up it's kind of one, one thing on my you know needed list that i could mark off my list of haves yeah. now this next album i want to talk about uh, a little bit because it's it's a herbie man record and you just don't go you know you don't don't pass on herbie man don't pass on herbie man for me this herbie, this is store. at the village gate um it's from uh, what year is this from? I want to say 1962. Uh -huh. The cool thing That's about this Herbie Man. is that there's a gentleman who plays bass on this. He doesn't play bass on all the, all the songs. He plays bass on a couple. One that he wrote, uh, it's called Coming Home Baby. His name uh -huh. is Ben Tucker. And Ben Tucker ended up retiring, and, and not retiring, but moving to Savannah in 1970 uh -huh. and settling down there and kind of owning the town. He, That's where you live. When it came to playing jazz, he's you know well-known guy playing jazz, and he, he set up a club called Hard Hearted Hannah's in Savannah. You go there and see Ben Tucker play, and people would cool. go there, and you can walk up to Ben Tucker in the middle of a damn song to start talking to him. He, start, you know, he starts this conversation with you, which I think is rude, but... Huh? He he's such a nice guy. He just you know never say no to somebody. Yeah. And speaking of never say no, boom. Jack and I, my friend Jack, we, yeah. we worked for a, a commercial production company. We made commercials. Hello. I still make commercials. Hello. Well, back then we made commercials for a company that you know did cable insertions, and we we were making this commercial about the ABC, some kind of children's product or uh, uh, place. Oh, I like children's product. We needed some music, and we didn't have anything really appropriate, and we thought. This is how stupid we are. First of all, I didn't know who Ben Tucker was th at that level. I didn't know he played with Herbie Hancock. I didn't know he played with Lionel Hampton. You know, I didn't know this about him. Sure. Herbie Mann. Um, he didn't play with Lionel Hampton. Anyway, so up. we go to Ben Tucker, and we, we, he was playing at a club one night. We had a, a three-quarter inch camera with a lavalier mic, much like this one. And we said, we would, we would really appreciate it. Would you, would you mind playing the ABCs? He's a bass player. Just give yeah. us a boom, 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 you know. And he looked at us like, what? What are you asking me to do, you know? And I, I think he was so confused that he did it. We got him to do it. And I think <laughs> I think we actually got him to do it twice. Just out of response? Like a retake. We're like, hey, we, could you do it with a, just a little more jazz? And he's like, you know, he did it twice it through. And, and it's we actually did that. Now, where that spot is, and I, I can't tell you. It was on three-quarter inch. It's probably, it's probably ruined and yeah. destroyed somewhere. Boom. Now, Ben Tucker, the sad thing about Ben Tucker is last year, last June, he was run over. He was oh, in a okay. golf cart on oh. Hutchinson Island across the river from Savannah. There's a resort over there, a real nice golf course. They play the Senior Open there, the, the U.S. Open Senior. And uh, he was playing golf and, and, and crossing the road. Somebody came by because there is a racetrack on Hutchinson Island that people like to try and get on. It's, they're not supposed to be there and get on there and drive their cars real fast on this racetrack. It's closed down. But this car came flying by and ran him over, and we lost Ben Tucker. Savannah lost a great man. Uh, but I just I was so pleased to pick this up and to learn a lot more about this guy uh, Just wonderful and it's a great record. I mean Herbie Mann records are just wonderful to begin with. Oh, it's such a so. good story What are you what are you eating a deviled egg? My mom made some deviled egg because she's a friend of the program Get you one okay. of those Jay. No, Come on Jay. Do All right now Mr. Bananas, I'm sorry. Okay <laughs> Mr. Banana. What you got, Steve? You got something else? No, not, well, I got one more, but... Right, I'll do one, you do one, then I'll finish it up. Okay. That sounds dirty. I got my very first Bird's LP. I'll tell you what. 
This is the ninth album by the Birds. Um, it's it's called uh, Untitled in parentheses, a parenthetical statement, which is perfect for Grown Man Record Night. So what this is, there's an LP in here that's a live uh, album. There's an LP in here. It's a live concert from uh, two early 1970 performances in New York City. That was not uncommon, though. True. Wheels of Fire by Cream yep. is a live album. So it's a t double album, the other studio. And Pink Floyd's Umaguma is a live yep, album live and the, studio. Yeah, okay. um, and this is around that same time, really. Sure. Um, the second one's a studio recording by the Birds. I don't have any. So it was a good taste. Oh, I got some cool like, live tracks. I was mad that I passed on that. I got some cool uh, studio tracks, and it it was great. It was a, it was a you know six bucks, totally worth it. I was worried. I'm like I don't know live. You never you rolling the dice with live performances. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of those are shitty, but uh, I tell you what, Steve. Let me. I'll let you finish with that one. Okay. We'll hammer it home with that. We'll finish. You, yeah. Let me finish. Here's uh, the last thing I picked up now. Let's talk a little uh, Eric Burden. What a hell this of a the fellow from the Animals, right? What this is is the early Animals with Eric it Burden. Started war, and um, it's funny. This is um, this is what they would call a um, what compilation. Call it? No, <laughs> uh, an off sequence album. What's that mean? Now it's not in the sequence of normal albums. These all came from a recording. Um, from 1963. Oh, and, um, let's okay. see where this was. I've seen that with a lot I of jazz. It, a, I've seen that with a lot of jazz records. They, took, they, they record sessions, and then later on, they're like, hey, let's go back and put another album. This out. took a freaking miracle to find this. Uh, find out actually what this was. It's a Pickwick. Um, it's a Pickwick. And even better than a Pickwick, this is a Canadian Pickwick. It's a Canadian press. From uh, 1973, I think it is, or something like that. Yeah. God bless us. But Canadians. this is from what is a 63 um, recording of a live show that they made a bunch of different records off of and broke them into different concerts and different records, and they came so out So you call that an out of sequence? That's what they What's consider. that all about? It's got the old uh, printed in Canada on there. Okay. How about that? It was originally released, uh, let me get this right here, yeah, Scepter Records. Spit out some deviled egg. There you go. So uh, Pickwick Maybe was known for shell. doing a lot of cool uh, re-releases and stuff like that. But this is the uh, Scepter Records um, original release. Very cool cover. It's just a live show with uh, the animals, early animals with Eric Burden, 63. It is phenomenal. When the uh, when the power came back on, I put this record on and we jammed it the F out. And let me tell you what, folks. This is a, the animals, if you don't know, are part of the original uh, British Invasion. They were some of those bands that first came over, really started introducing crazy, like get bananas and nuts on the stage kind of stuff. Which It's hey, like rave blues, a I lot of really rave appreciate. rave blues. Really? Chaz Chandler on bass, who went on to Man, produce Jimi Hendrix. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. We're, 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 Canadian I love the animals. Yeah, Canadian pressing, baby. No Alan Pickle, man. Canadian yeah. bacon? How about Could some be. Canadian bacon? It's cool. Or I don't Canadian. find those very often. So, uh, John Candy, Canadian bacon. <laughs> oh, man, now I'm hungry. Don't and talk about guess. Canadian bacon in All front right. of Mike Miller. Hammer us at home. Okay. Hammer us home. Last there, but not Steve. least, uh, he picked up uh, the Skull Snaps. Come on. Yeah, self-titled LP from 1973. Off. This is not from 1970. This is probably no. 2005 or six. Probably maybe. the nine. Nine? Maybe nine. nine. I don't know. I don't know. Will you show this, please? Will you show this? Great album. First, there's yeah. a great, great gatefold on the gatefold's that. Gatefold's great. The cover. The whole great. thing is great. Uh, you know, Irv Waters, Sam Cully, George Bragg, and George Bragg is the man who got left out more than anybody else when it comes to sampled music. Uh, it's a new day, and the main part of It's a New Day is the drum track from the beginning has been sampled probably over 324 times. Crazy amounts. By many folks who have made a lot of money in Obviously. the hip hop industry. Not only that, Sugar Ray, okay. Fly, I Just Want to Fly. Easily the most sampled drum break in the history of the world. I'll yeah, yeah, I'll mention a few. I mean, Old Dirty Bastard, Das FX, DJ Jazzy and Fresh Prince, DJ Shadow. Uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. I'd like to mention one that I thought was funny. was Yag Fu Front in the song My Dick is So Large. One of my favorites. Yeah. Whosample.com is a great site to go to if you want to find out more about bands like The Meters 
and the skull snaps where yeah. these guys have been left behind. Some and, of these guys have not been paid. There's, a, there's a great article, yeah. um, who, snap, or who Sample did a great article about on this and talked to Irv and asked him, I said, you know, what do you think about that? How does this make you feel? That, you know, your song, have, your music's been so um, um, embraced and used by so many yeah. people and he's not happy at all. Yeah. None of them are happy at all. George has died. The drummer died, never saw a penny. You know, His family never got a penny. I'm a big fan of sampling. I respect the art that comes from uh, digging for a good beat and sampling it. But here's what really bothers me is when you tell a story like that and there's some cat that wrote the, the, the dopest drum beat ever and he dies a poor man and his kids have nothing yeah, and everybody has sampled sucks. his shit that and made sucks. a bazillion dollars off of it. Doesn't that suck? Come on, guys. So yeah. anyway, I do want to say this. Uh, I, I found cool. Sam Cully on Facebook. Yeah. I don't. He might want to be your friend. Uh, he's my friend now, and I'm really pleased about that. He doesn't have a fan page. He just has like Sam Cully, add friend. Yeah. You know. But I intend to let him know. I, I just I just can't tell him right off the bat how I feel about this album. I listen to this album. It changed my life. It's so in, it's so intense. It's so great. My opinion. I, when I hear it, I think of I, Mar, it reminds me of Marvin Gaye. It reminds me of Sly and the Family Stone. It just reminds me of so much. My opinion. Yeah. The best funk album ever recorded. Yeah. Uh, now, this has a reissue. Yeah. Now, is that the original cover art? Yes. yes. No, that, that is the that, original to cover. To me, that's beyond its time. Most people think it's like a metal band. To me, that's beyond its time. Okay, look at my shirt. Yeah, the, a, the label is GSF, yeah, and they went out of business. With, a within a year of this, they went out of business, <laughs> and they printed only a couple hundred copies yeah, of this. So the, the if you have an original, you have something. They're worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It went to England, and then an English label picked it up and printed it, and I can't remember the name. Another English label named Charlie, no, maybe it was picked, but another English name named Charlie did it without permission. So if you have a Charlie record, you have a bootleg, and they're not really happy about that at all. And I will say this in closing, I mean, The Skull Snaps, what a great, great album. The best. There's a movie that's coming out this spring. It's being played in some clubs right now, and maybe some coffee houses and things like that. But it, I think it's going to come out on DVD. It might be out already. I'm not sure. I want to apologize if I don't know the, the truth, but I'm trying to figure it out. I want to watch this movie uh, it, about The Skull Snaps. It's called The Legend of The Skull Snaps. Oh, it's so look great. for that. Get your hands on it. Watch it. And, and you know, YouTube, understand. iTunes, it, Amazon. If you don't know the Skull Snaps, look it up, folks. That's one you got to look up. If you like funk music, you like hip hop, look it up. I think people stop what might want to stick around this sh for the show. We're going to play it. I think we should play it. Even if you have to stop watching the show, go look stop up the watching. damn Skull Snaps. Seriously, it's that important. Let's wrap up this edition of Dig of the Week. We're going to go right into a damn so to speak. Oh, We're going to keep this pee shit my britches. I'm going to pee my moving. britches. Yeah. We're going to keep it moving. We got a soda in the freezer. We got a Mountain Dew in the refrigerator. We're going to talk about some business. Keep in it moving. I got to um, So we didn't get to do a damn so to speak last week. And it was a, it was a situation. Switch. So here's what we're going to do. Look at the old Frazoo over there, too. Steve, you found some uh, Mountain Dew in the glass. Bottle? I discovered, we did a commercial for a local store that embraces back the back you know back in the yesteryear era and they had a whole uh ice a uh, cooler of oh that's frozen yeah put it in too what the hell <laughs> we they, they have a ton of old sodas on in, in bottles and i we've got we've tried some stuff from them before uh but they had diet mountain dew and diet dr pepper in yeah. glass bottles, and I never see this. Whenever you see like classic, oh, we're bringing back Coke in a bottle, yeah. you never see it in diet. If That's because they, 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 they usually the big selling point would be that it's cane sugar. Sure. Well, uh -huh. you've got the, the Mountain Dew 65th anniversary. I'm not sure if that's cane. The 65th, the 65th anniversary. And I've got a Diet Mountain Dew in, in the glass sugar. bottle. Yep. So I want to just toast okay. to that, the fact that I've got a glass bottle of Diet Mountain Dew. It's the only diet with dew in it, by the way. That's what it says. Let's, uh, let's try. Is Dale Jr. endorsing that or what? He should be. How about that to old Jr.? I'll tell you what. Is he a, is he a, he's a Mountain Dew guy, isn't he? Uh, yes. You run a little... Uh, and this guy's a Dale Jr. guy. You run it first in the uh, 500, and then two seconds, <laughs> the car, come on, get you some of it. The car real, ran real well tonight. We want to thank the Mount, what, Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Hell, that was a little uh, loose in three. But we were able to pick it up in straightaways, and I tell you what, we well, put that you, some bitch on hold. I think you effing ran out of gas last time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. 
He does that quite a bit. That's that happens a lot. Yeah. Let me tell you what, the one with the real sugar. Yeah. That's the real D right there. This is there. good. This is real good. I, I I couldn't I didn't I couldn't wait to try the doctor. I didn't bring Diet Dr Pepper because I just killed it right there. Yeah. Because really nothing good. tastes better to me than Dr Pepper in a glass bottle. I'm sorry. That's the ultimate high soda for me. You killed that whole thing. Ah, go bananas. I need a caffeine. Go bananas. I need it, folks. I need it. I want it. I need it. I gotta have it. Put something in the freezer to get it cold real fast. Oh, can we? Oh, there's some liquid. <laughs> we got it going. It? Let's try. There's something going on here. Tell us what that is, Steve. Well, um, World Market. World, World Market also has a lot of cool sodas. And yeah. show this to the crowd before we devour it. Um, this is called Lemmy. Is it for, as in Lemmy from Motorhead? I don't think so. Can it be? But so it can be if you no, want that, it. It can, like that, it can be whatever you want it to be. We're going to pretend like we're going to drink Lemmy juice. Okay. Okay. This is right from his um, his mold. So it's a sparkling lemonade. <laughs> oh, it came right out of his mold. Yes, this is mold juice. Very dirty. That's awful. I know. Yeah. Lemmy's got a big mold. Awful. We know. He does. <laughs> So, what band was Lemmy in before he was uh, Motorhead? Hawkwind, baby. Thank you, thank you. You would never think that Hawkwind is such a little psych British Joe psych band. Prog. You're with Hawkwind. Good prog band. Go get Hawk some of it. Hawkwind. Hawk 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 Hawk. Hawk. I'm gonna pour me a little of this sparkling. It's got some <laughs> ice chunks in there. There you go. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to get Here, that. You much try this. Let me see what you think of this Lemmy. And um, let's try this. It's a sparkling lemonade. It's got some ice chips. It's like in a there. cold lemonade. Very good. Yeah. Well, is it a soda? Is it carbonated? Lightly. Well, we can't tell. We froze it. A lot of great lemon it's very flavor. Icy. In honor very of icy. the most successful animated movie of all time, Frozen. Which we turns people into lesbians. Lemon. That's Does what, it? That's some pastor said that. The, oh. This is established 1939. This is really good. Really? Steve. Yes. Hey, seriously, try that. It's it tastes like lemon juice carbonated. Yeah, it's it's very good. Uh, oh. Made in Washington State. I want to put salt in that. That's good. You need salt. I know. My body <laughs> tells me to put salt in that. Could you mix it with tequila? You sure. Oh, my God. Sure. Hello. Great mixer. <laughs> yeah, Serving suggested. Thank you. Okay. Let's wrap up this edition of uh, So To Speak. That's two good ones. Two good citrus ones. Real good. Eating enamel off my teeth and I'm going to piss my pants. And I'll tell you what. We're going to do <laughs> We're going to... Uh, Take this opportunity. <laughs> Our bladders are just like <laughs> bursting at the seams. And then back like, uh, what are you doing, man? I gotta pee. We're gonna hit a few things off on this week's edition oh of Ship Chat. And let me tell you, folks, we got shit backing up on us. That's uh, all right. Uh, that's we good, can stockpile. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Back it on up. Here's something chip that, chat. Uh, chip chat. Here's something that didn't quite damn make it on us. Uh, I'll tell you what. I, wanted to, I kept. I kept preserving Oh, I'm so ready for that. Uh, what happened? Uh, a damn week in between. That's what storm, happened. The storm. The storm happened. You had, what, to, you had to eat for shit. survival. You had to eat for survival. Uh, it was touch and go for a while. <laughs> these are Pringles tortillas, the nacho cheese Pringle tortillas. Not had these, so it was like a tortilla chip. Pringle style. Good. Empty. Good. Very good. Had a great nacho I'm, I'm a big Pringles fan. I oh, love Pringles. what they did. You know, you yeah. can make it. When I was a kid, you can make a really good cannon with these. Step on now, it. Now, they have since caught on. I think so many parents were so pissed off that kids were doing this that yeah. they, they made it now. So if you take the seal off, this one actually might work. There we there go. go. Get out of town <laughs> there, Steve. Uh, tennis balls. Sure. Okay. Sure. You can also, uh, you can, if you fly a plane into a. Uh, uh, nope. Nope. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So that was a good chip. It didn't make it. That's what happened. You gonna send a chip like that around two weeks? We're gonna damn eat it, and we damn ate it. Mm. Here's a couple we've been waiting on. Steve, you, you picked these up. Where'd you pick these I up? I picked these up. Yeah. Uh, I think. Did I pick these at World Market? I think so. These are uh, Benitos. It's a Chipotle barbecue black bean chip. A bean chip. I don't know about this. Non-GMO. Non-GMO. You damn hippie. Gomo. Um, 
Non gumma. Project verified. It says. Project verified. So it's a black. So it's been run through the ringer and passed the inspection. Yeah. Nice ingredient list: whole black beans, long grain rice, cholesterol sunflower, free, cane sugar, sea salt, tomato powder. No onion. MSG. That's good stuff. It's got all kinds of. Certified lines. low glycemic. Hand me that bag, buddy. <laughs> So a black meat. Oh, they're dark. They're black. Let's hold these guys up and get time. Okay? Here, get you one. You pass it on to the cameraman. Cameraman. Those are good, man. They smell like a dog biscuit. They do? They look like oh, a dog biscuit. Oh, wow. They're, they're good. good. Huh? Not, I thought it was going to yeah, be harder yeah, than that. Bacon -y flavor. Very bacon-y. Yeah. Very coarse uh, texture. Bacon bean. Bean and bacon. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, that's good. It's got a raw kind of natural taste to it. I bet he likes these. But a lot, but a nice kind of spice to it, well uh, as well with the chipotle. Trust and form. Yeah, that's good. But but I will say this: I think they definitely have to have the spice. If you if you can remove the spice from this chip and taste it, they'll be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Taste. yeah. There'd be no taste at Tastes all. Just like black beans. I'm eating a piece of cardboard. You're a racist, Jay. <laughs> Get out of my house, you racist. <laughs> don't, uh, don't don't take it. Racist. Have you ever had black bean string? Yeah. No flavor whatsoever. None. What about the black eyed peas? They got no, some flavor. No flavor whatsoever. No flavor whatsoever. Okay. Hey, Bossman hook us up with these. Potades chips. Saltad. Is that Hispanic? They're from IKEA. I broke them all up. So right they're now. from Norway? IKEA, the uh, uh, Swedish. 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 So these are from IKEA. I could I should have said Scandinavia. They're from Charlotte. Oh. Problem? Nope. Nope. I really tore the bag. Trauma. <laughs> I tore the bag, sorry. Are those only available in Ikea stores? I believe so. Well, you know how Ikea is. You hardly wow. can't order anything online, so. I thought that was going to be a standard. Like a raw potato. Like potato a really, potato. like a really, um, they don't do anything to clean it up. You know, just Very cut organic. it. Skin included. Out of the ground. Yeah, it's got a nice flavor to it. I like that. It's different oh, it's than I would think. I like it. I thought it was going to be like a normal potato chip, but it's 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 thicker. It's, it's got a more of a kind Nat of nat a natural flavor. Kettle Almost kettle, but no, not no. quite as it's different than it's a kettle. A kettle chill. Airman says it's kettles, kettle. They don't have kettles in wow. Sweden. No but kettle. No. Don't don't sleep on your potato right, chips. Cauldrons. Uh, cauldron chip. Don't sleep on the potato chips from Ikea, I guess, is the moral of the story. So take your, go there, drop your kids off at the front the front place where the kids play, and go get you some of these chips. They got a playground there. Yeah. They do. Uh, a pool. A pool? A pool and a pond. Okay, let's wrap up this dish in the chip chat. I tell you what, folks, we've had a damn great show. We we, we had to be away for a damn week, but we came back with uh, lots of cool records, special in-studio guests. Did you know being away... Makes you absence you makes you, the heart grow fonder. Yeah, something like you you embrace the, uh, the 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 reunion so much more. I, I put that in a poetic way. That sounds kind of hippie. Yours dude. was actually poetic. Mine was yeah, dumb. Hippie, <laughs> oh, so that's cool, man. We appreciate everybody joining us. Be sure to check us out on the YouTube channel if you're not already. We got a new Facebook uh, page. So if you're not uh, friends with us on the Facebook page, it's Facebook.com/slash um, Grow My Record Night. Uh, YouTube, hit us up. We got a contest coming up soon. We promise. I gotta get that video done because uh, we're close to 200. That's what I was kind of waiting on. But we're double what you were asking for. Uh, but it jumped so fast, it was kind of uh, it was kind of crazy. It kind of caught me off guard. So now time get flies to when you're having fun. Damn straight. Appreciate you joining Quote us. Uh, we'll Tip be back. Future. We'll be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, be sure to go to the YouTube channel, watch our, all our old shit, uh, catch up with us on the Facebook. I'll be posting cool shit throughout the week. Uh, we appreciate Jay, original drummer. Thank you. Pork chop drop chop life. Good to see Jay, oh, man. <clears throat> seen him Jay in a long damn time. Cameraman, good seeing you. Yeah. For Cameron and Jay, Steve Fever, I'm Mikey Bananas. We appreciate you joining us. We'll catch you next time on Grown Man Record Night. We sure do appreciate you. We appreciate you. The center cannot hold. <laughs>